Sometimes when it comes to your favorite color profile, you just need to splurge a little and pick up an expensive ink with a proven name. So if you read the title of this video and you watch other content of mine, then you know that I am a fan of all things with a turquoise or teal underpinning. Today's ink is one of those inks that has a little bit of both. That also means that this is one of those inks where I must stress at least once for you to take the time to look at multiple reviews and pictures of this ink to get a good idea of what it is going to do under different lighting conditions. And while this ink is neither a true turquoise nor fully teal, I think it does a good job at hitting all the boxes that will make this a keeper in your collection if it isn't already. So now that I've given away the plot, let's get to looking at the ink, starting with the unboxing. Okay, I lied. I'm breaking with tradition here and starting with the ink already outside of the box. One thing I've liked about these Pilot boxes is that Pilot does a good job getting the accent strip on the box to match the ink inside. You'll see that a little bit later in the ink blot. I mean, this isn't a 100% match, but it comes close. The next thing you'll notice is that I kind of have yet to mention the name of the ink. That is because of the choice that Pilot made in the packaging of this ink. In English, they spell it out as Sayuro. If you look for a few seconds on forums, you will find a few people that are quick to point out, and rightfully so, maybe, that it should be pronounced closer to Shoro. Then the conversation dives into a difference between kanji as it is meant to be pronounced versus how it has been romanized. That was a long tangent on the box, but I didn't want to have that come out while we were looking at something a little more exciting than a well-done silver box with a grayish turquoise strip and a name that could go multiple ways on the pronunciation tree. Moving past pedanticism, there is no denying that Pilot does a good job on the bottles. This 50ml bottle is an accent piece that will fit in on virtually any desk. The label is simple and has the name of the ink, as well as a sample strip, giving you a good idea of the color inside. And even though the profile is pretty narrow, the overall height makes filling your pen an easy affair to the very end. And once you get to that point, they make life even easier by including this well-designed nib reservoir to allow you to get that final drop out of most number five or number six nibs. If I was going to pick anything to take away from this bottle, and I mean if I was really forced to pick something, I would have to point out that these bottles can be a little bit of a fingerprint magnet due to the large real estate of the outer glass housing, but that is nothing that can't easily be fixed by a microfiber cloth or a paper towel if that is something that really bothers you. Moving on over to the KPIs, we have a respectable showing on both Rhodia and Tomoe. Out of the broad nib of this Kaveco Sport, we are looking at a 15 to 20 second dry time here on Rhodia, and when we move on over to Tomoe, it's more in the 20 to 25 second range. Sure, this isn't the fastest drying turquoise adjacent fountain pen ink that we've looked at here on the channel, but out of a broad nib, I'm calling this one good enough. Before we look at color, I really want to show off another good showing of this ink. As we get water on the page, I'm expecting a good amount of color lift and a middling result. That is not what we get here on the outcome though. Once water is off the page, what we are left with is easily a four out of five for water resistance. This is easy to recover and it does a good job at retaining the underlying color that helps this ink stand out. For a water prone person like myself, this is a win. And that brings us to the color. The back sticker on the box calls this a gray turquoise. Fine. The longer I look at this ink, especially on these lighter portions, I can see what they are saying. But as you move into the darker mids and then into these transition tones, the ink becomes more vibrant to where the gray is almost lost entirely, and this becomes a teal with turquoise undertones. And while there is some sheen here on the page, I'm glad that you really must push this ink to get it to sheen. By holding back here in these transition tones, this ink is allowing for these bold colors to come through and offer a nice presentation. And that brings us around to the writing sample. You'll see here, as I switch between Rhodia and Tomoe, 
that the color profile is very close between the two papers. The only real difference I'm seeing is that here on Tomoe, you are getting a little more of that velvet teal, whereas Rhodia offers us more of a matte teal. The shading though is very similar, and the only real toss-up I see on the color is if you prefer a matte look, then Rhodia is your jam. If satin is more your style, then Tomoe or other similar papers would be a good pairing for Seuro. As for the other behaviors, there's nothing bad to say about this ink. There has been no hard starting, no skipping, no fill or feed issues, and it made it three hours on the cap off test with no problem. As I've said on other videos though, I would still not recommend leaving a fountain pen uncapped for three hours at a time. But hey, you do you. Overall though, sure, this is an expensive bottle at $23 a bottle for 50 mil, but it's easily a $23 that I would spend again, and I will be spending again, when this ink runs out. And that does it for our look at Pilot Oroshizuku Seiro. If you liked that video or found it useful, then hit the thumbs up button, get subscribed, and consider becoming a patron for as little as $1 a month. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.